Hi and welcome back to Verbose DevOps. Now today I want to talk about Kubelet, which is a very important component of Kubernetes. This is a quick 10 minute deep dive. I hope it gives you a really good idea of what is Kubelet, what does it do, and how it's critical to Kubernetes operations. If someone were to ask you what Kubelet is, you, you should be able to answer that question. So, Kubelet is one of the two main Kubernetes components that you'll find on a worker node. Now, the other one is Kubeproxy, and you could tell by the name, you could guess it's got something to do with networking, then you would be right. I'll show you on a diagram shortly where those two components are. So, Kubelet and Kubeproxy, but we're focusing on Kubelet for this video. Now it's also referred to as a, a node agent or, or some call it a bridge. Now an agent is usually in system terms a small process or program that sits on a machine or a device and indeed Kubelet is like an agent for a node. You will find one Kubelet per node and it has a pretty special purpose. Some people call it a bridge because it occupies a very central position between the control plane and the containers and without Kubelet nothing will work. Now I like to think of it as a kind of supervisor of a department. If you think of a department with people in it, what we call human resources, now you can make an analogy that your department instead of human resources might contain containers they do the same thing they do work and they need a supervisor to organize that is the role of Kubelet and just like this analogy the supervisor in real life will report to senior management the board something like that in Kubernetes, Kubelet will report to the API server, the control plane. So it sits between the containers doing all the work at the bottom and the control plane, which the API server at the very top. So that gives you an idea. Just a reminder, in case you've forgotten, a node is nothing just more than a machine like a VM or a physical server. It's just a Kubernetes term for those things. And by the way, on the right, I'll put a symbol, an icon, a typical one for Kubelet. You'll see that soon on the diagram. Before we move on, what is actually Kubelet? You know, this magical thing. What actually is it? It's actually just a Linux daemon that sits on the node and runs on the node. It's a background process. That's what a daemon is, if you didn't know. If you're coming from a Windows server world, that's the equivalent of a service. And it starts a boot, and you will typically have no interaction with it you will never interact with it or very very rarely especially if you're in the cloud it does have an undocumented API but not many people have ever used that and you can actually interact with it on the command line but hardly anybody does that so just forget about that you typically will never interact with it it's very very reliable so let's have a look at the position in amongst all the other components on a Kubernetes cluster you can see on the left hand side in the blue dotted box is a control plane so that contains some core components of Kubernetes you don't run any apps there that's the control plane all of those resources you see there are dedicated just to keeping up the main cluster and what you don't see there is that's actually composed of several uh, what are called um, several nodes but we call those specific nodes master nodes because they're dedicated to the control plane if you're in the cloud you won't even see those master nodes and on the right hand side is what we're more concerned with you see three what are called nodes there but they're actually worker nodes and they're called worker nodes because that's where you run your applications we call those type of nodes worker nodes and as you can see on each one there are the two core components I mentioned, Kubelet, which we're talking about today, and also Kubeproxy is there as well. So we will cover the other components in future videos, and this is a nice reference diagram too, but let's move on. 
So what does Kubel actually do? In one line, it manages containers on its node. So, or specifically, number one, it will register the node with the API server automatically by default. That can be changed, but automatically it will register the node with the API server. And more importantly, number two, it receives pod specs, which are desired states for pods. So remember, a pod contains typically uh, one container. It can contain more, but typically just one. And on the right, what you see is a manifest that contains a pod spec. So if you don't already know, Kubernetes manifest is just a YAML document that describes all the resources that should be created on the server. And there will be a pod spec in any manifest that needs a pod to be created. And as I say here, Kubelet will receive a pod spec, a desired state for a pod. Now, first point is that it usually receives it from, I said in red there, the API server. However, it can also get that from a file or an HTTP endpoint. But that's quite unusual. Most cases, it will be from the API server. And secondly, it will also ensure, according to the pod spec, that those containers are running and healthy. And it will do create, update, or delete, or anything else necessary in order to achieve the desired state. And how does it actually, let's say, uh, mechanically do this? It will interact with the node's container runtime. For example, container D. So, as I mentioned already, it's always trying to achieve the desired state and taking corrective actions. So that's why I've even said it in blue there. It's constantly trying to ensure, via a control loop, the desired state. Oh, and by the way, look on the right hand side. Hope that gives you a better idea. It's like Kubelet is like a supervisor managing the containers. The containers are doing the work. So, let's get back to Kubelet and how it maintains its desired state. It's doing continuous container health monitoring, and if it sees a container enter an unhealthy state, it will take corrective action. As part of that, it's managing container life cycles, so it's starting, stopping, restarting, whether it's correcting or whether it's some future desired state. It's taking care of all of that. And finally, it's also ensuring that the node resources, CPU and memory, are not exhausted. So in the pod spec it should be specified for that particular pod or, or, or replica set that's using pods or whatever how much CPU to allocate and how much memory to allocate and it's Kubler's job to make sure that it what's called bin packs those containers so it packs them efficiently without exhausting all the resources and if it gets close to exhausting all the resources, it should be telling back to the control plane, hey, look, this node is getting full. You know, you, you need to do something about it, i.e. schedule on another node or maybe even do some auto scaling. So I just want to finish with a word on metrics. So every Kubernetes component has got its own metrics and this also includes kubelet and they tend to be prefixed kubelet underscore or whatever the component is so I just want to show you here quickly this is a github.com slash kubernetes and you can see here a whole bunch of defined metrics by the way obviously kubernetes is open source so you can see the golang source code this is what this is and you can see here some of the names of some of the metrics I think they're missing the prefixes but you know you get the idea that it's all publicly viewable which is awesome so let's go back and these metrics are exposed in an HTTP endpoint which is pretty common amongst IT infrastructure and they're exposed on slash metrics on port 10250 on the node now you can navigate to that through your browser or you can even curl it uh, you can even make a custom program that will access that endpoint and do something with it. But 
most of you are probably going to be scraping it with a monitoring solution like Prometheus. And in the top right, I've given a, an example from the Prometheus site where the metrics are being scraped from a, it's called, they call it an application or an exporter into Prometheus Server, which is in itself a time series database. It will store those metrics and you can do even more with it later once they're there, for example, push alerts through to Alert Manager. So I want to finish with a few examples of some metrics. I've given some bullet points there. The first two are uh, metrics that show the Kubelet node names and also the conditions. The idea here is let's say that you have three worker nodes, but any of those two metrics there are less than three, so one or two then you know that there's a problem you're not getting a full healthy state or even reporting all the names of all your nodes so there's an issue there that needs to be resolved uh, the third one Kubelet running pods now if you're not aware there is built into Kubernetes a limit per node of 110 pods this can be modified but in general it's accurate and there's actually a metric there for Kubelet running pods you should have it it should be close or it should be something around that number obviously it's probably not going to go above 110 but this will give you an idea of how it compares to your pod limit and you can take corrective action if the value looks really weird and the final one I put there is basically kubelet runtime errors obviously like any system you're going to get some errors but they should be very low amount and there should be a very consistent and not changing number and if you get a spike in that metric you can check for that and obviously that probably is telling you that there's some issue there and you should take corrective action so just a flavor of metrics so back to the diagram you can see where Kubel is I hope this video has given you a great idea an understanding of Kubelet and its place amongst all the Kubernetes components. I hope you've learned to appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed this video. So I will be covering the other components as well in future if I haven't done already at the time you watch this video. So thank you for watching and see you soon.